you. Good evening, everyone. Um, it's nice to see such a full house. Um, good to be here. I'm here. This is Rabai's uh, evening. It's the launch of his book. And I want to start off by um, having Rabai introduce himself a bit as a writer, as a personality, as a character. <laughs> <laughs> so that you get a feel of him before we talk about his book. And I think um, some writers, I mean, particularly now with modern fiction, you have a lot of writers who come straight out of English literature degrees and MFA, creative writing programs, and they're basically their life experience is a lot of studying. But I don't think the same can be said of you. No, I came from <laughs> my experience, not from any graduation. I born in 1945 in the city of Ashkelon. The city turned to be, after that, after 1948, to be, uh, uh, it was named Al Majd al Asqalan. It turned to be Ashkelon in southern Israel, and in, in present time. My family moved to Gaza. I was three years old. They walked around 15 kilometers on the sand dune next to the beach. And when they arrived un under a very heavy uh, rain, they arrived Gaza. They settled there. We lived, I think, three years in a tent in a refugee camp where are hundreds or thousands, maybe thousands, of tent planted on the earth like mushroom. After that, we moved formally to a Palestinian refugee camp. I lived 16 years old. 1956, the Israeli occupied Gaza during the war of Suez, or they call it Suez uh, War, which being participated by uh, British, Britain, France, and Israel. Israel occupied Sinai and Gaza Strip. On 31st of October, the Israeli soldiers occupied Khan Yunis, where I was living with my family. They held a massacre of 250 guys between 14 and 45. They, they pick up, picked them up, house, to house, and they took them behind a wall in every quarter and shot them three times from three meters. Then to 1967, 67, another war. I just left Gaza three months before, three months before the, the, the war. I was studying in Egypt. I returned to Egypt, never to go back until 38 years later. During the time, I didn't see my family. I didn't know anything about Khan Yunus. I didn't know anything about my country. From there, let's go back to 1970. The, the security, the Egyptian security police accompanied me to, with, on, the, on the flight to Damascus. From Damascus, they throw me to Amman. In Amman, I get involved in, in, the, in the civilian war. I was a fighter. I never used my gun. I hide it somewhere during Black September because of my, maybe I am coward, but I believe I couldn't kill anybody. I cannot, I cannot shoot. I cannot kill anybody. So this is my uh, journey. That journey has been written completely with details and uh, uh, my autobiographical uh, novel, The Taste of uh, uh, Separation. The, I think this is a unique story, and this story has a lot of experience. The experience I, I keep built up and up. Just to live, I start write short stories, and then write a story, publish it, get some money, then I find I could write an article. I start writing politics, and then uh, it's the same, and live with a few dinars in Iraq or in Lebanon, Neiraz, or something like that. And from there, I, I start my life as a writer and as a journalist. Well, thank you for that. I, I, I mean, with all this, this wealth of experience and, um, and it, things that you've lived through and gone through and you've written about it, I mean, what interests me is to write about factual situations like this 
as a journalist, researching them, looking at them, studying them in a way that is making sure that you are completely sure about the facts in a way that you're depicting it to an outside world who maybe doesn't understand the situation. To move from that to fiction is a step. It's a mental leap. It's a, you have to somehow transgress the sort of normal modes of operation and start playing with the material like finding different ways of, of experimenting to make your characters work. How did you find this process? Do you think you've always been a frustrated novelist? First, my, first exper my first step towards the, uh, the fiction was the autobiography uh, uh, test of separation. It should be an, a biography, a normal biography, but I don't like that. I always look for something different, something controversial, something... Uh, attractive, something makes something, otherwise Story. you don't have to write. This is, this is what I tell myself. That's why I have only four books and each one is different than uh, the other because I don't, write, I don't want to write any book. I write the book deserved to be written. So I have this unique story, I put it in that book, but I'm not con convinced of the traditional way. I was born for a family, so and so, and a refugee camp, etc., blah, 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 blah. So I was looking for a different way. In that different way, I start looking of the problem of starting a book. How to write a book? How to start? With what? What is the first sentence? By the way, the first sentence for me is the sentence which tell you the outline of the story. The paragraph will explain the first sentence, then the the first page will give you the details, then you throw the reader toward the middle of your book. I faced the problem. I was three years old when I was in al Majd al Askalan, before 1948. I know nothing about it. I did the research. I heard a lot from my parents, from neighbors, etc., etc., etc. But I want it live, and I can't visit it because I can't visit, visit Ashkelon because I, am, I, I have no passport. What to do? I try to imagine it. That the first mm -hmm. point lead me to recreate mm -hmm. Al-Majdal again with, with its people and its life and find a place for my family and the this, this streets and what they suffer and how they left, etc., etc. When I... When I got the British citizenship, it's a trigger in my mind. It's time to go back. That point opened a channel, a very wide channel for me to go through. I got the idea of a Palestinian going back home after 38 years. It's, it's completely strange. I, I can't myself, I can't remember how I spent these years in exile and uh, how I lived it. I was happy all the time, by the way. I wasn't just, just saying, uh, we, uh, crying on my uh, exile and saying that I am so... As no, I live it. Every place I live it, I live it as my own place until I found a uh, solution. Then I got, I got an idea of a Palestinian in Germany working with a bank and uh, uh, he, he couldn't integrate in the German uh, society. And he divorced his life, he's been divorced, and he dis decided to go back. He remembered that he has, uh, he ha he, he's been in love with a young girl, 19, when he was young. And uh, he got an information that uh, that lady, uh, her, her husband has been killed by the Israelis although she is 50 or 50 something, but he wants to go back uh, for two reasons. To, to his first love and to be Palestinian again. So I have this idea. But I want to make it the contrast. I need another character who doesn't want to go back. And that's make this novel is a traditional novel. It's not ordinary novel, it's different. There is a Palestinian who doesn't want to go back. It's simple as uh, that. So I have these two characters. What I did is that leave these two persons 
introduce themselves. The Palestinian and the Israeli, they both are human beings, but let's see if I am the author, did not impose my ideology and ideas upon them, how they will act. Then I put a distance with them. I let them do whatever they do. When you read the book, you will watch. I don't know, you don't know. You watch both of them. The reader can see each one, how each one think of the other. The main thing for me was, is since Emil Habibi, I don't know how they translate it in English, the story of the optimist, this optimist side. Yeah. He's just a, 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 guy, a normal Palestinian want to live his, li his life after, uh, after 1948. He doesn't want to involve in any politics, but all the way we find him involved in politics. Because if he wants to move from how, his house outside Haifa, he needs a permit from the military office, the Israeli military office. Then, since then we stopped there. And then we start talking always, the Palestinians talking about the three, the troika of the uh, Palestinian novel. Uh, Emil Habibi and Ghassan Kanafani and uh, uh, Jabra, Ibrahim Jabra. I think that we shouldn't stop there and we should do something different. After that long time, I think I might put something different. The controversially came from the cover why the Tel Aviv. It's the first time it's been written in any Arabic uh, uh, novel. Um, in terms of the novel having an element of controversy and uh, breaking boundaries, do you, do you feel yourself, considering the different places you've lived in and your lack of a passport for periods of time, do you feel yourself more secure to write freely since you've been living in the UK, since absolutely. you've got more secure status? Absolutely, uh, yes, absolutely. Write? And I'm sorry for the guys who live in Gaza or West Bank. I, I'm sure they cannot do the same. I'm sorry for that. They cannot do the same. The, the living abroad give you uh, two, two, two things. You are away from the situation. So you, are, you will not face any problem, whatever uh, you write. The second thing that you can see the panoramic picture, more than to be inside the picture and see the next door only. One of the aspects in the novel that I really admired were the descriptions of Gaza in the beginning. I thought that it was the characters that you created were very vivid and very uh, sort of non-stereotypical. And it almost seemed to me like... Uh, like a sort of Bruegel painting with lots of different characters all doing their different activities, not necessarily linked to each other. And there was a lot of tenderness in the way that you depicted them as sweetness. The Gaza sections towards the end, the vision seems a little harsher in terms of how the main character is viewing them. There's more criminality, there's more corruption, there's a little bit. Is this your own feeling about the changes that have occurred in this 30-year period? Um, or was it meant to reflect changes in the narrator? Or what were you trying to show here? Would you agree in these differences and approaches to Gaza? Francis, is you, you live in that city, or, or um, you live in uh, there um, before 40 years, and you go back after 40 years. And uh, you, you, it, it's a shocking, it's a shocking, the situation. Everything has changed. I, just to give an example, example uh, will help to understand this. When I, when I myself faced my mother uh, uh, for the first time after 40 years, I, I know my mother, which I know, not, not the mother actually now after 40 years. And I have no idea, maybe I have a picture through the time, some, some time I have a picture of her. And, uh, uh, I, I was scared when I stepped in. Everybody of my relative left me. Uh, left me. They, I, they asked, my mother asked them not to enter the room and left us alone. 
She said that I haven't seen him 40 years. Leave him for me for a while. Then I call you to come. When I went, I went there and find that old woman. I remember my 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 wife. My, sorry, my mother, short, white, beautiful, with the black hair, and uh, what I could, I I find an old woman couldn't move sitting on the floor. Then I said that I start looking for my mother, seeking for my mother in the future of my mother. So we have two mothers. This is the mother I have now. And I have that mother in my mind. So I will find that mother in this mother. This is kind of the uh, change. All my friends, I didn't find them. I didn't find any one of them. I was shocked when one of them being killed by an Israeli sniper and the other being corrupted in somewhere and the other lost and no one was other. A new generation, a new, a new authority. And by the way, it was under the uh, occupation in that, in that uh, uh, time. Uh, I think I, I said that uh, um, that time that Gaza went back 50 years. She is older 50 years, or she went back 50 years. I don't know if I answered your Backward. question or not. Backward, yes? No, no, no that's uh, fine. I yeah. think it's time to open up for questions, um, if anybody has any questions, but thank you very much. <laughs>
and understand and admit what they have done to the Palestinian in 1948. You know what they do? They call it, there is a black hole. In 1948, there is a black hole. Swallowed the history. The history melted there. And the milk or whatever, melted there. Nothing been before 1948. And Israel just came from the sky. Stop. And came now. I myself, I can prove that at least my family, according to the, its three family, lived 300 years. I can go back. But I went there as a stranger, as a European, as a British, not as a Palestinian. When you recognize that, that yes, we, the Israelis, did this, this big catastrophe for you, and this is the price, then we can talk about this. Let's share the sky. Do you agree with me? Let's share the land. Do you agree with me? Tell your government. Let's share the shit. Let's share the rubbish. Let's, let's share the flowers. Let's share everything. When you find the Israelis ready to share everything, I think the problem will be solved. I, I want to show you or the ordinary people. I want to show you a symbol. I want to show you the, uh, an ordinary Palestinian, how he lives and how he lives in Gaza, how he moves from place to place, how he moves through the crossing, the Israeli terrible crossing. Could you imagine that a guy or a group of people, around 200 or 300, I don't remember, I remember stay nine hours to go through Eretz crossing to cross a hundred meters in their land, in their land. This is what I show you. I want to show you the fact. I don't want, I, in this novel, I never, uh, as I said, I did not uh, impose any ideology or anything about the Israelis. But Just, I'm, I'm telling you, read it, watch the Israeli, watch them, how they treat the Palestinian, and you get the result. This is what I want to show you. I'm not separated from that. I'm not separated. Uh, I am involved all the time, in single minutes, in any day, involved of the situation. Uh, what, whatever I write, even for journalism, or for fiction, or for any article, it's a politics, it's about the crisis. And I was specialized uh, for eight years in academic institution, a Palestinian academic institution uh, of the Palestinian cause and the, the, the Israeli, uh, Palestinian Israeli uh, uh, crisis. So I have all single details. I am involved, really involved. What I meant that I lived as a person outside allowed me to see the whole picture, which when you are inside, you cannot see it. You can see, you can, because you are under a heavy pre uh, the pressure of living that life day by day, minute by minute. But I, I am aware of that. I can see it and can describe it. I can feel it. And besides, I went myself there and I had my experience. Let's say that there is a war happened. There is a situation in Egypt. They're gonna, uh, they, they, uh, there is a big problem in Egypt. We're gonna write about this. I think you cannot write fiction about that now or in a month. If I am Egyptian, I wanna write about this. I don't write in a year time or two. I don't believe in expectation and uh, uh, discover the future and talking about this, uh, blah, blah, blah. And no, it, you keep it and you get the experience and you write. Uh, again, this is what we, we, we got usually. And when you are away, you get that distance and you can see the history from a distance. When you live the history, it's different than when you see it or revise it. Uh, yes, I am writing a new novel. And uh, I think I am in the last, last part of it, let's say, 
still third of it. I could finish in a month or two, but always I said that and I couldn't because I still, I still need to do something uh, different. And uh, uh, I, I want to, uh, when I want to go through, uh, through spaces, let's say, or places, the Palestinian novel did not went uh, uh, to. I want to talk about problems. Palestinian never dare to do that. It's somehow it's risky in a way uh, for me. Risky, not personally risky, and getting bad uh, reaction and bad criticizing or something like that. But I intend to do uh, do that, and uh, I, I will finish it when I convince that I have done something. Uh, I like it, at least. Thank you very much. Well, I think we should all give a round of applause to Rabai.